deemed my life changed forever. I collapsed on the bathroom floor, unable to move one side of my body or talk. I woke up during the night feeling unwell and very dizzy, but thought it went, I thought I just might as well go back to sleeping in my go. I woke up again, just gone past seven, and I still felt sick. The dizziness got, was worse, and I had a strange feeling down my right side. I managed to get up off the floor, and I managed to get myself to the bathroom where I collapsed. I heard my ha I heard my aunt shouting my name, my name, but I was struggling to speak. Somehow I managed to let out a noise that she came into me. I don't remember much after this point until I got to hospital and doctors and nurses were all rushing around me. My aunt was with me talking to me. I knew I knew what she was saying, but I just couldn't respond. I had no feeling down the right side. I was scared. I couldn't tell anyone. I remember looking at the doctor and him saying, man, if he did not offer it, I would die. I've never been so terrified. I wanted to tell my family I love them. I remember my aunt squeezing my hand and telling me she loved me and that I had to fight all the way to the theatre. I was praying in my head to my dad and my nan, who both passed away to their fight, you know, to help me fight and to keep me safe and give me strength. Everything went dark. I woke, up, I woke up in Leeds a few days later and I was told I suffered a major stroke caused by a rugby tackle a day before I collapsed. The impact of the tackle had torn the main artery in my neck, causing a blood clot to my basilar artery on my brainstem. This condition is rare in adults but almost never seen in children. I had been left with damage on the brain and significant narrowing to the brainstem, which has left me being very high risk of fairer strokes during the first two weeks of recovery, I suffered a second stroke, this time on the cerebellum. I recovered well after five weeks in hospital in Leeds. I was allowed home to Hull, where I spent a further two weeks in hospital. The doctors called me a walking miracle. I was told I wouldn't walk, talk or eat again, but I wasn't having none of that and I defied the doctors. I had an enormous support from Rugby World, with messages of strength and support coming from all over the world. My two hometown clubs and Hull KR and Hull FC united for me. Something I'm always thankful for, especially the early days when I felt I couldn't go on. Hull Kingston Rovers made me an honorary player and gave me my own squad number 41. And I are given an honour of walking <coughs> with the boys and delivering the match ball. All which gave me a massive boost. The players and staff at Hull KR supported me massively and went above beyond for me. The Rugby World and the local community rolled around to support me and my family, which I can never thank them enough for. I had big hopes of playing rugby again, but I had been left with this blood caught on my brain, which due to its location is too risky to try and remove the game because of the damage already caused by the two operations had led it it had. It's been two years now since my first stroke and that on the outside I look fine but the stroke and the brain injury is more than you could ever imagine. I now I can ne now never play rugby again which broke my heart as I wanted to make my dad and I'm proud but it's also spared me on to do other things. I could I could have given up so many times and I believe and believe me I felt like it. I felt often, often asked why me. Why I wasn't dealt this in life. My father died when I was one, and then I lost my mum and went to live with my aunt. As we came rock through all this, then I lost my aunt to cancer. I also was hit by a car when I was eight and suffered a serious leg injury. I was beginning to get my life started, I was happy, so why me? The words, he will die, will stay with me forever. I've learned not to take life for granted. Though I struggle daily with neuro fatigue, learning difficulties and memory loss and motor and fertile tics. And also anxiety and panic attacks. Seizures and stroke symptoms are invisible consequences of brain injury. I will never give up. I, ne I now help raise awareness of brain injury in sport and strokes in children. I have done various campaigns including getting sport teams to take 
selfies with my logo and post on the internet using Team Connor, hashtag Greenerette and hashtag Get Educated. The whole thing went viral with professional and amateur people getting involved. I made my own stroke awareness video which has been seen by thousands of people on Twitter and Facebook and been shared hundreds of times hoping to raise awareness that kids, that kids also have strokes too. I've brought out my own rugby shirt, scrum caps, rubber balls and I have recently raised money for a £16,000 sensory station to be brought over from the US and Life for a Kid, a local charity from Hull who I am very proud patron of who support children with life limiting illnesses and disabilities have offered me my own office to help use the station and help children with brain injuries including stroke and autism. By supporting them, the sensory station and hopefully help them to improve visions, reactions and so much more. I'll be the first in the UK to have this sensory station and hope it will help lots of children and adults. I have also won a loads of awards for my bravery including the Stroke Association Child of Courage and Yorkshire Young Achiever and Yorkshire Choice Award for my charity work. I am an old patron of Life for a Kid and I volunteer at the Stroke Association in Hull. I have my own charity where I raise funds for other charities so far I have raised over £20,000 for charity. I am still involved in rugby and coaching the under 10s and help out up with my old team on a Sunday. It's a, it's a lonely sideline so watching your mates doing something you loved and now not being able to go on that pitch with them many times. I've watched and sit and cried at what brain injury and strokes have taken away from me. I am no longer able to go out alone as I forget things and I am high risk of fair strokes. And I thought of having one and if I'm all out alone it's very scary. I now need constant supervision, it's hard. I'm slowly being allowed to do light exercise and rehab. I have now returned to school full time due to problems I have but I have recently just started college doing sport. I am not allowed to do contact sport at the college now, but the college are more than willing in to have me do the course and now about my issues and encourage me so more. <laughs> I also have an educational healthcare plan in place for at college. In the, in the, in the last two years I have had to relearn things I learned in primary school. I've had to learn to swim again as well as ride a bike. I was told by school I wouldn't sit my GCSEs but despite only two hours a day I managed to do four exams and even managed to get a C in science. I have a lot of work, I have a lot, I have a lot to work on but it gave me an idea where I was educational wise. I have come so far in my journey, and believe me, I struggle every day and every night. I go to bed knowing I'll face the same fight the next day, but I'm lucky. I'm here fighting, doc I'm here fighting. Doctors still don't know my prognosis because of the narrow and the blood clot on my brain, and I didn't give me much of a chance of survival, so every day is precious. I can't change the past and the horrors of that day, but I, I can change the future and I now want to help others by raising awareness. I now have new dreams, new hopes, and now seeing other people smile makes me happy. I will always be eternally grateful for the support I have received. And if my story helps one person that is life after stroke and not to give up, then I'm happy. The stroke socials have supported me and my family so much and give me my confidence back. When I attended the Life After Stroke Awards last year, I was shy and barely slow. But with the, other, with the help of the Life After Stroke team, I got up on stage and made a little speech. And well, one year later, I'm speaking here to all of you all. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my story. I hope it hasn't, haven't bored anyone. Please, please enjoy the rest of the day and thank you for supporting the show station. Thank you.